Hello and welcome to Secrets of Organ Playing podcast. We are your hosts, Vidas Pinkavichus. And Ushamut Zide Pinkavichin. We've been mastering secrets of organ playing for more than 20 years and sharing them on this blog since 2011. On this show, which we create from our home in Vilnius, Lithuania, we strive to help you grow in every area of organ playing, including practice, technique, repertoire, sight reading, hymn playing, improvisation, composition, music theory, harmony, and many others. Our hope is to help you become a complete musician, or what we call as total organist, a program which we have created to help you reach your dreams faster than you would do on your own. If you are new here, we invite you to subscribe to receive free updates of this blog at organduo.lt. By subscribing, you will also receive free video on how to master any organ composition and 10-day organ playing mini chords. And now let's go to the podcast for today. Hi guys, this is Vidas. And Usha. Let's start episode 392 of Secrets of Organ Playing podcast. This question was sent by Ariane, who is our total organist student, and she writes, I've been sight-reading some hymns from Bach's Christmas Oratorium. Why are his hymns just so special? They always give me goosebumps. She means probably choral harmonizations. Yes, I guess that's what she means. And not only from Christmas Oratorium, probably in general Bach's choral harmonizations from the cantatas are, are very special. True. Well, if, you know, I would have to answer such a question, I would say that if you think about Bach's harmonic language, it's very sophisticated. Because he uses a lot of, you know, extra notes. Non-chordal notes. Non-chordal notes. Probably much more than other composers, uh, his contemporary composers, so, you know, his predecessors. So that's what I think, you know, makes his, his chorale so unforgettable. What do you mean um, by non-chordal notes? What kind of notes could that be? Well, all kind. He uses all, all the possible Mm-hmm. Variations. Such as? Well, now you you know you're making giving me a hard time because it's really hard for me to use you know, these all non harmonic notes in English. Passing tones. Passing right? tones, neighboring tones, uh, escape tones, uh-huh. nota cambiata. Suspensions. Suspensions. Of course, many suspensions. And not in one voice, but sometimes in all the voice use suspensions at the same time. Uh-huh. Maybe one voice doesn't have suspension to have the the beat on time, and then the other three could have suspension. Yes, and uh, you know he uses also these chords that gives uh, such a nice color to the harmony, such as Neapolitan six chords. And all that secondary dominant chords mm. and double dominant chords. So this is advanced harmony. Sure, sure. Third year of harmony well, in your school. Well, I don't think my students would be able to analyze rightly Bach chorales. Mm-hmm. Probably college level harmony. Well, definitely not in the and Academy of Music, not as it is right now. Mm-hmm. But, but yes, it's college-level harmony. Um, you know, Bach never wrote a harmony textbook. Well, that's why he left so much you know, wonderful music. Instead of writing you know, books, he composed music. So we can take his musical examples as, you know, as uh, books and study them. It is true that he did write... Um, a short um, guide f- and rules for harmonizing and playing the thorough bass, right? Uh, I think 
like maybe 10 or 12 precepts, like rules, what to avoid, but it's very short, like on one, one leaflet. But in general, nothing very extensive, and only his student, uh, Johann Philipp Kirnberger, together with Johann uh, uh, C.P. Bach, I think. Karl Philipp Emanuel. Yeah, C.P. Bach uh, uh, collected his choral harmonizations from most of the, his cantatas and uh, published after his death in a volume called 371 chorales. And this is like a testament of Bach's mastery. Plus, we have to remember that most of Bach's cantatas are gone. Not most of them, but the quite a large portion of them, yes, is gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so anybody, including Ariane, who is interested in, in Bach's special musical arsenal and harmonic language, would do very well if they would pick up this volume of Bach's choral harmonizations and play and study and rewrite and transpose and internalize like that. But in general, I think you know that Bach genius exceeded his his contemporaries and in general probably other composers of all generations. I don't think anybody could compete on the same level as as, as he was. Mm -hmm. It would be a real challenge. And I wonder if it's worth it. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Like one time I <laughs> submitted my several, seven choral improvisations for publication with Wayne Leopold. And um, this was my real, really beginning of improvisation um, practice. I mostly memorized those, those uh, chorales and they became sort of written out pieces, which I actually um, wrote out afterwards and put them, put a few of them on YouTube too, so people can listen even today. But the point is that I submitted the manuscript of seven, seven choral improvisations. Those are, I think, almost all in trio texture. And I was so proud that I could, you know, imitate Bach style. But what I did is like, uh, is uh, what came out was like maybe more of a Krebs style, <laughs> not Bach style. That's funny. And uh, a few months later, Wayne Leopold, the famous editor, wrote back uh, that. Uh, nobody can compete with Herr Bach, you know, uh, that I better, you know, create something original than, than imitation. And uh, since then, I think my, my view about composition in general and improvisation in particular changed. That I, I admire people who can who can imitate other masters, uh, but uh, in a long run, in a historical uh, run, 50 years from now, I think like 100 years from now, what is more important to leave a legacy of original works, not imitations. True. It doesn't mean that uh, I'm right or I'm wrong. It, and it doesn't mean that other people shouldn't have their own opinions about such matters. This is only demonstrates what I'm thinking at the moment. And I, of course, reserve the right to change my mind. Lots of things to think about, right, on this 
a gloomy, snowy Monday in Lithuania. We hope uh, wherever you are it's not as gloomy and not as much snow as we have. Thank you guys uh, for listening, for practicing according to our suggestions. Please keep sending us your wonderful questions. And remember, when you practice, miracles happen. This blog is supported by Total Organist, the most comprehensive organ training program online, where you will find courses for every area of organ playing, including technique, practice, sight reading, repertoire playing, hymn playing, improvisation, composition, music theory, and harmony, with hundreds of scores and thousands of exercises. Here is what some of the students are saying. Hugh writes, The sight reading course has helped me tremendously. Thank you very much for your SS courses and all your help. Robert writes, I found the fingerings, registration ideas and general comments to be excellent. John writes, I have found your download very helpful. It was really excellent. I have watched some of your teaching videos and when I read your instructions. I try to imagine you are there teaching me. You may feel disappointed that I am two three days behind, but I am a slow learner and I have committed to taking the time to get it right as you say. But the other night my wife commented that she had never heard me play such a detailed melody in the left hand so well. My left hand is generally poor. Robert writes. It has been a great pleasure in my life of having discovered your courses and material as well as the YouTube work of recordings. You have a calm and pleasant way of teaching. Ron writes, Hi with the Santosha. Thank you guys. What a wonderful response to my email note to you. You've got me right and I feel you understand my level of playing. Yes, at home and lucky that I have an organ for that reason. I am paying attention to this and I am going to try this haha no longer secret model. Yes, and I love Caesar Frank too. What is very nice about your blog podcast is that Osha and Vidas are like a Socratic dialogue and by bouncing things off of each other, so much more information comes out and is expressed. Your comments contain a wealth of information and understanding. I really appreciate this. It is very inspiring and will keep us moving forward. Would you like to receive the same or even better results that our students are getting? If so, join them at organduo.lt slash total dash organist. And of course, you will get the first month free too. You can cancel anytime. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed to receive free updates of this blog, Make sure you do that at organduo.lt. By subscribing, you will also receive free video How to Master Any Organ Composition and 10 Day Organ Playing Mini Course. This was Vidas and Osha from Secrets of Organ Playing. And remember, when you practice, miracles happen.